Welcome to Yung Tuition. I am Yung. It has been raining for over 10 hours outside. Can you hear it? That's how the earth cool its surface after a hot summer. Unfortunately, many people seem to have forgotten this simple fact as if the warming were not periodic. This continued discussing basic issues in climate research since 1860, when infrared absorption by water vapor and CO2 was observed by Tyndall. In 1896, Arrhenius published a long and tedious research paper in which he proposed the first climate model based on the so-called selective absorption by CO2 and water vapor. Today, I would like to report some unexpected new findings from Arrhenius' paper and several key references he used. In particular, the direct observation of the infrared spectra by S.P. Nanny, who was good at mirroring radiation, but not so good at building airplane. In fact, the unit for radiation, Ry, is in his surname. I use one Li per minute equal to 697.3 watt per meter square a lot in my research because it was still the preferred unit among meteorologists until the 1960s. So are you ready? I mean to like, to share, and to subscribe, as well as to activate your little bell so that you wouldn't miss any of my new talks. Let's remember C.G. Ozawa, my favorite conductor, who created a joy and a hope in my darkest day. By 1896, it was known that water vapor and CO2 in the atmosphere can absorb infrared rays. But exactly what the infrared absorption spectra look like remained unclear. So is their relative contributions in affecting the climate. Tyndall, the man who first did the experiment, held the opinion that the water vapor has the greatest influence. But others were inclined to think that CO2 plays a more important part. In particular, Arrhenius claims CO2 is the chief absorbent on his paper, page 260, without any direct experimental evidence. In this memoir, The Temperature of the Moon, Lanny shown his uh, detailed observation from the mountain Whitney of the moon's radiation that is partially absorbed by the atmosphere of the Earth, as shown in this representative infrared absorption spectra attached to his uh, membrane. In fact, it was based on Nanny's observation that in 1896, Arrhenius eventually made his uh, quantitative predictions of the surface temperature at a different CO2 concentrations using his climate model with singularities. The Venus, I must say, it is extremely tiresome for anyone to find out how Arrhenius adopted Nanny's data to his research. You can try to read this uh, original paper as I attached here. Besides, his choice for the quantity of CO2 and water vapor denoted by K and W, respectively, seems completely unreliable. No figure was provided for the data used. No formula was given for his absorption coefficients in relation to the two quantities, K and W, for CO2 and water vapor, respectively. No justification were clearly described. For example, I finally found his description on how he calculated the total atmospherical absorption coefficients based on his assumption that CO2 can absorb more infrared radiation from the moon than water vapor does. On page 263 here, which I will explain in detail in the future. Today, I will focus on what Nanny's actually observed 
together with his co-worker Barry, whose name was carelessly omitted by the publisher in one of their memoirs. This is the diagram of their instrument, in which you can see the rock salt prism here. Very simple instrument indeed. I suggest all senior schools and universities provide it for students to repeat Nanny's observations if they are really want to understand the climate stability. In passing, Arrhenius told his readers the apparatus is too expensive for him to have one, but I think the real reason is he was not good at doing any experiments. In fact, on several occasions, he got so annoyed when some observations are different from his calculations that he called the data absurd and threw them away. Return to the observation published by Nanning and Berry in 1887. Many tables can be found in their membra, but I am particularly interested in the infrared absorption spectra they observed. Finally, I found them, as shown here. Each diagram is called a plate but its number may be different from what you found in Arrhenius' original paper because several memoir had been published beforehand. Of the most important plate is this one. The horizontal axis is the angle of the deviation or the angle of the refracted infrared ray, which can be converted in wavelengths in micron, as shown here. The vertical axis denotes the radiation intensity detected. The detected radiation is actually the transmitted infrared ray from the moon after penetrating the atmosphere of the Earth. As you can see, the path length increases as the moon moves from the top of the observatory. Obviously, the atmospherical absorption is the minimum along the so-called zenith direction perpendicular to the Earth's surface. The solid curve is the observed transmitted radiation intensity. The dashed curve represents the infrared radiation from the moon at the top of the atmosphere, similar to a black body radiation. Bear in mind, nobody knew the surface temperature of the moon, but it is evident Nanny and Barry attempted to deduce the moon's surface temperature from the veins north, as shown in this plate. It should be pointed out that the observed infrared absorption spectra are slightly different from different seasons, months, and even days and hours. This is not surprising at all because our atmosphere is dynamic, and hence the distribution of the water vapor and CO2 are not static. As you can see from this plate, two infrared spectra, one observed in winter, another in summer. Nevertheless, the main spectra features remain more or less the same. Notice the maximum peak or the minimum uh, atmospheric absorption occur between uh, 37 and 38 degrees, whilst the maximum atmospheric absorption appears between 38 and then 39 degree. To help you to understand what I mean, I have spent hours to digitally transform the original infrared spectra observed by Nanny at different uh, refracting angles into wave numbers in per centimeter, as you can see here. <clears throat> the dark curve is Nanny's observation. The green curve is the calculated spectra by Arrhenius. The dash curve is the Planck function at 580 Kelvin for the moon's radiation at the top of the Earth's atmosphere. Perhaps this is the world's first diagram of both the observed spectrum by Nanny and the calculated spectra by Arrhenius in the wave number scale. I feel thrilled to directly see the two important infrared spectra which can be used in my further researches. 
To my surprise, many new issues show up as a result. In particular, the observed atmospherical absorption spectra by Lenny in the 1890s is quite different from what has been reported after 1960s, both by computer simulation and using FTIR or Fourier transformed infrared spectrometer, such as IRIS used by Hanil of the NASA, as I discussed before. More importantly, no upside down CO2 absorption peak was observed around 15 micron or 667 per centimeter, contrary to many computer simulated outgoing non wave radiation spectra nowadays, such as this one used by the two Williams. Besides, the atmospherical window around 1000 per centimeter seems absent. Very strange indeed. I'm sure Arrhenius would have no idea about what I'm talking about simply because the CO2 absorption spectra around 15 micron had not been observed before 1898 by Robbins and Archikness. In addition, it is clear that the water vapor absorption dominates the apparent attenuation of the infrared radiation from the moon between wave number 200 and 2,500 per centimeter, which seems consistent with this computer simulated transmission spectra or spectral brightness temperature, some people call it, except for the two strong CO2 peaks at 15 and 4.3 micron are missing. I will continue to discuss my new findings before I evaluate Arrhenius climate model that was built based on Nanny's observation. So please stay in tuned. Thank you for watching. Thank you for donation. See you next time.